Welcome to our spoilers review and recap of Finale by Stephanie Garber. So Finale is the third and final book in the Caraval trilogy. It picks up right where the last book left off. Tella and Scarlet are living together with their sleeping mother waiting for her to wake up. Scarlet is pursuing a relationship with Nicholas for reasons because, you know, you can't just be... Romance! <laughs> this is a book of love triangles. <laughs> And she's just like, hey, fuck it, if Julian's not paying attention to me, I will look at this guy who is Nicholas, the guy who I thought was an asshole in the first end. But it turns out it wasn't because he wasn't actually Nicholas, he was Armando because he was also a player in blah -de blah blah It's It's an onion. So she finally meets the actual Nicholas, and he seems fine. He's fine. He's fine. He might have been right for Scarlet at the beginning of the novel. But they're really series. not now. And Tella is obsessed with legend and they're kind of on the outs but he's visiting her every night in her dreams and so she finally decides I'm gonna follow him and that incites the plot. Yes. So of course Jax is still kicking around and he still like loves Tella. But apparently he also doesn't love Tella. But that's a whole nother thing. Tella follows Legend, and Legend is going into the secret runes, secret place. I don't know where he's going. He just goes to this magical place. And there's this witch there. And she's like, clearly he and this witch had a thing. Legend is like, well, you know, the fates are out, and uh, I need to defeat them, so... Uh, Give me more magic. Yeah. And she's like, uh, I guess so. You're pretty hot. <laughs> So, uh, here, have some magic. And so he, like, makes out with her and takes all her magic. He tricked her. And so he now has the magic of the witch who created him as well as gave all the, ma like, magic to the fates as well. That was interesting. And then she kind of goes away and... Comes back at the end to die. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you're like, that's a plot thread I thought was going to last longer. Well, remember that feeling because that is that the is entire book. book. Basically, Legend is going to be coronated as king, but the fates want the throne. And so it's just like this game of how are we going to defeat the fates? Well, we found out that the fates were created by this guy called the Fallen Star. And the Fallen Star had a thing with uh, Scarlet and Tella's mom. Mom, and Scarlet's actually his daughter, and he needs Man, you're her. It's just, so much. it's just, it, <laughs> I'm skipping over so much, but they're also nothing. Yeah, like, it's true. At the same time, the majority of this book is just the will they, will they, will they, won't they, will they, won't they, will they be together, won't they be together? Does he actually love her? No, he doesn't, but he does because reasons. Yeah. I don't know why I'm falling, falling into like a carnival voice for this. I just feel like I'm like an announcer. So they figure <laughs> out that the fallen star has created all the fates and he is immortal. And now what is the one way to defeat an immortal? Love. Love will bring us together. Immortals are immortal until they fall in love and like you can fall in love for a second apparently and then not be in love. But for that second that if you're you in... feel if you feel like love in that moment, you can die. And I like this as a concept a lot, but it doesn't feel like there was a lot of weight given to it. If there had been more of a difference between what love is and what obsession is, then I would be more there for it. Because I think it's a really interesting concept, especially in teen fiction, where First love is so overwhelming and crazy. Is it actually love or is it obsession? And there are hormones everywhere. But it wasn't really handled well. You're trying to set these things as two different things, but they end up looking exactly the same, and there's no fallback for that. Like, there's no bad consequences. So Legend supposedly is obsessed with Tella, and Jax is also supposedly obsessed with Tella, even though she made his heart beat. And, he's, and she's supposed to be his one true love. So she's got these two immortals kind of after her. And people are like, oh no, usually the mortal ends up dead in this situation. The problem is, it's very all the same. The whole goal of the story is now to make the fallen star feel love. All these characters are kind of like wandering around, bumping into each other. Nicholas dies. <laughs> and you're like, wow, I thought you'd have more impact on the story. Because basically, Scarlet goes to see him once. She thinks she's going to see him a second time. She gets tricked into being captive of the fallen star. The characters are looking for Scarlet and they go to Nicholas's manor and it turns out that he's been like brutally murdered. And Tell is just like, well, I guess he, she, he actually did kind of like her because clearly this looks like a struggle, so he wasn't willing to give her up, like, give up any information. I guess he was an okay guy. And I'm just like, this plot thread could have easily just been, like, 
colder, <laughs> right? And it would have been more interesting if he was like actually one of the fates or something wandering around and he was like fucking with Scarlet just because he wanted to. So Scarlet gets captured by the fallen star and she realizes that she is actually his kid. One of the things I noticed with Legendary is there was a lot of retconning at the very beginning of the book to like work in the fates. I overlooked it because the story was interesting. This book, it definitely felt like it was doing the same thing, like retconning, like we spend the entire Legendary trying to get the mother back, but we have the mother and she's dead within 25 pages. Yeah, she basically, she wakes up, she's like, oh shit, I need some water, and then she disappears and then Tella follows her and she like goes to the fallen star and she's like, oh, I'm back, and then she stabs him and then he's like, oh, you betrayed me, and he kills her. And then she dies and she's dead. Yeah. And that's it. There's no resolution. There's no conversation between her and her daughters, really. It's just like, oh, look, she's up and she's back she's down back again. Down again. And so they realize, okay, clearly the Fallen Star probably was in love with our mother at one point. So we're going to introduce time travel in the last quarter of the book so we can go back in time and, like, get stuff so Scarlet can pretend to be our mother to try and seduce her father so that he feels love and her so sister can kill him. him. And I'm just like, this could have gone very badly. Like, like what kind of Oedipus Greek myth shit is this? Like, I'm gonna seduce my dad. Like, I mean, I wish we had spent more time with the assassin fate because he seemed really interesting. Like, yeah, he seems like he's had a big like, journey. He's like, People are like, oh no, don't, don't fuck with him because he's been through so many different timelines that he, he's gone all like crazy because he can't tell timelines because so many changes have happened. And he's like the most well-adjusted out of everybody. Yeah. These are the rules. Cool. We're doing this. Okay, let's go. So I would love to see him show up in another book somewhere. And I guess the Poisoner has a crush on Scarlet. Sort of. Sort of. But yeah, this book is filled with just plot lines that don't go anywhere. Like the mother... Nicholas, the witch. I love the whole Jax thing. I do too. Where he's like, you were supposed to be my soulmate. And I mean, yeah, clearly it's not a healthy relationship, but that idea just was so fascinating to me. Like, imagine <laughs> you're in this world and you're told you, yes, you, you have a soulmate. And one day you're going to meet your soulmate and all your dreams are going to come true. And you finally meet your soulmate and your soulmate's in love with somebody else. And you're just like, no, the, you were supposed to be my person. <laughs> like, I find that really interesting. And then he just disappears. That was the other plot line. Okay. So we skip to the end where Scarlet has successfully seduced her father. And then he, then the charade quickly falls away and she's like, you felt love for my mother, like, I saw the love she had for you. And he's like, oh, I feel love again. And then, I feel love for you, my daughter. Here, <laughs> undo all my magics. <laughs> and I'm just like, like, this does not feel like it's deserved. Yeah. But to get Tella into this room so she could stab the fallen star, she has to appear to be under the sway of Jax. And so Jax is like, you know, like, give in to me, let feel the, like, feel the love for me. And the bargain is that if you do this, like, I will let you kill the fallen star, but it's you and me forever, baby. <laughs> and she's like, fine, okay, whatever, I'll do it. And so she does it, she kills the fallen star, the fallen star's like, oh, I will fix all my mistakes. And then, then Jax is like, hey, sweetie, it's time to go. And so they start walking out and Tella's like, this is the best thing, I get to spend all my life with Jax, I'm so happy. And then Legend is like, don't go, remember your love for me. She's like, right, I do. I do love you. And Jax is like, oh my god. <laughs> and then he just walks off, and he's gone forever. Like, he doesn't, they don't I, say anything to I each think, other. you know, my theory is he's going to come back for Tella and Legend's daughter, and it's going to be a becoming darkness situation. Like, that's, <laughs> that's where I see this going. And you're just like, whoa, that just got dropped on its ass. Like, after all of this story where he's been, like, trying to get Tella to, like, feel something for him, he's trying to, like, he's I doing mean, everything. He's yeah. pulling out all the stops. And, like, we're aware that this is, like, he is not a good person. and This is unhealthy. And he just walks away at the end like it just didn't seem like there wasn't even a conversation where you like 
I'll you, be back for you. <laughs> or even like where they resolve it or he comes to like some sort of conclusion like, hey, I'm just kind of glad that you're happy or or something. Like there was no character change. There was no nothing. He or just, like, hey, you know what? Maybe I don't want to be with my soulmate with the possibility that I will fall in love with her one day and become mortal. Yeah. You know like, what? I think leaving is probably in my best interest. Nothing. nothing. He just disappears. And... So yeah, the book just ends. Scarlet's queen now. Yeah, because apparently anybody can be like, I am related to the monarchy, and people are like. Because it's kind of implied that their mother was like the heir. It's implied, but nobody knows for sure. Yeah. But like, there's been six people who've been like, I have the rightful claim to the throne because I was married to their wife's cousin's mother's second brother. Like, and people are like. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. It was okay. Like, this book did not go where I expected it to go. I expected Nicholas to have more presence. I expected Legend to have more presence because in the first two books, he's the master of Carabal. He's got this all shit all figured out. Like, he's got his games, he's got his puppets, he's working his angles, he knows what he's doing, and he's had hundreds of years of experience just setting stuff up like that. And then in this book, he's just chasing Tella or like being mysterious. He's not doing anything and he's not living up to his reputation at all. I expected like another Caraval because I mean that's kind of what the series is titled where you know the fates are like tempted like he sets the stakes so high that the fates are tempted and like he could have set it up so that like the person who wins Caraval wins all my powers or something like that and they would have been on that shit like shit on Velcro. But he doesn't do that. So like he's just kind of this guy running around in this book, which is very And he strange. gets knocked out of the running for like a good like third of the book. Yeah! It's not what I expected. And she went for the non-obvious, but I think she really should have just leaned into the what she had going for her. I suggest reading it so that you can like finish the series and have an ending. Hopefully, and what I'm hoping is like now she's got her first series out of the way, she kind of has an idea of what, like writing and plotting and everything that she's gonna come back to this world at some point and really like dig into it with some new characters and I think that could be a really fantastic story because the world in this series is the best part. What she added in Legendary was phenomenal. Like Carvel was really really good, Legendary even better world-wise and I think she could really do a lot. So yeah, tell us what you thought of this series. Tell us what you expected. Tell us what you liked about it and anything that we missed. All right, that's our review. Bye guys. Bye.